that's open on there. Oh, carry it up. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in cryptocurrency. If you like money and crypto, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, guys, make sure to follow me on Twitter. We're trying to get to 50K uh, on there. So if you guys could go there and uh, show the Twitter trolls what's up. So today, guys, we got a very exciting episode for you. Uh, is we're going to be looking at some absolutely uh, insane developments in the world of cryptocurrency. And if there were people that were sitting on the sidelines wanting to jump into crypto, but maybe they were a little scared about the regulatory side of things, then that has been cleared out. Uh, and there are also um, some really dramatic reverberating effects for this uh, on some different coins and different projects. And we're going to be telling you guys all about that. Of course, we're going to be checking in on the Bitcoin price today uh, and the price of Ethereum. Uh, we're also going to be taking a look at uh, a huge billion dollar investment uh, into Bitcoin. And uh, TJ, this is Scaramucci's company we'll be looking at, right? Is that Scaramucci? No, that, that's Skybridge, I think. So Scaramucci also. The Mooch. Uh, I don't think we'll be covering that story today, but who knows? We might. We might cover that today. Uh, we'll be looking at the huge bank regulation news. We're going to be looking at a coin that I told you guys last week was going to be receiving uh, favorable uh, price movement because of something dramatic that happened. We're going to be talking about that. That came to fruition, just as I predicted. Uh, speaking of predictions, guys, I have now written my new Ethereum prediction video coming out tonight. And then we have a new Bitcoin prediction video coming out on Thursday. I look like a rooster. I look like a rooster. I have one strand of hair, you know. Hey, better than looking like a bald bull, right? <laughs> Uh, so we got that going on. So you guys make sure to stay tuned for those videos coming out uh, tonight. And then I think we're going to try to put out a top five coins video of January tomorrow. I haven't talked about that with the boss. That's TJ. Uh, it, it, a good drinking game. Now, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, I've been sober 15 years. But uh, a good drinking game for you guys that are degenerate alcoholics uh, would be to take a drink every time I say TJ during a stream. That would be a pretty a pretty fun one. Uh, we're also going to be taking a look at can Bitcoin hit three hundred and eighty four thousand dollars. There is some super deep analysis that is pointing us to three hundred and eighty four k, and you've got to see this analysis. Um, a lot of you guys are going to feel like you got hit by a meteor and you're in a crater like just looking up like I can't believe this came out of nowhere like this uh, that was a really uh, bad joke which you guys who watch till the end will get so that's some of the stuff we're going to be talking about today uh, and actually I just realized that I don't have uh, the Bitcoin price pulled up which we'll be uh, pulling up here in just a second so let me go ahead and get that uh, up from trading view so you guys can see that here in a second uh, and also, we'll be looking at a trade that I made on Bybit, another morning scalp on Bybit. And we'll also have to check on how that trade I had made yesterday worked out. We made some Ethereum leverage trades on um, uh, some Ethereum leverage trades on the channel in the last couple of days for this new account we created. Uh, and I'll just tell you this, guys, uh, my Bybit account is looking nice. I'm Four out of five, three out of three. I'm seven out of eight winning trades. Uh, you know, on the last, the last go round. I think I got a pretty good strategy. I think that's gonna that's gonna uh, definitely uh, keep up there. So um, we'll go ahead and get started here in one second. Hold on, all I gotta do is put in a verification code. Y'all can't see that, so that way I can have everything pulled up that we'll need for the stream. So okay, guys. All right. First and foremost, uh, right now, guys, we are coming in at. Uh, 216,000 subscribers, but I'm just going to be honest with you. That is a bold-faced lie. We are, in fact, at 217,000 subscribers. Uh, it has just not ticked up yet, meaning box mining. Come on, Michael Goo. I'm coming for you. He's at 219K. We'll be passing him here pretty shortly unless uh, he pulls, uh, you know, 28 to 3, you know, comeback 
on me here. So we're about to make that happen. Hey, we all the people that are in front of me, Ivan, Data Dash, uh, Altcoin Daily, obviously, and Box Mining. I mean, these are all good guys. So we don't, you know, we're going to feel bad when we pass them, but we're still going to pass them. So <laughs> I love all y'all. Okay, so thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, you know, yesterday we talked a lot about, you know, uh, Bitcoin euphoria token uh, in the stream. So uh, did that continue? Well, let's take a look. Yes? Super chat for, or from, his name's Extra Money? Yeah. From Extra Money. Asking about VeChain. You guys would know that VeChain is my number one pick for 2021. I believe VeChain is going to the moon. I don't think there's anything anybody can do it about it. You look at the different projects and the different niches in cryptocurrency, and you will see that it's the only niche that I can think of where one project is so far out ahead of the rest it's unreal i mean even when we look at uh chain link i mean chain link obviously is is very far ahead of its field as well but i can name four or five projects right now you know whether it's nest protocol or uh dia dio how you want to say it, obviously band protocol uh, I, I can name more that are direct competitors to orc or to chain link teller decentralized oracles uh, and these are projects that have momentum i can't think of another single supply tracking token I mean, I, I know some. I know there's Origin Protocol. I know there's, you know, Ambrosis. I know there, there's a lot of these different projects, but I can't think of one that's in its, you know. Real quick, Maurice, what do you, what do you think about a grayscale market for like yeah. Grayscale? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, that's something actually, TJ and uh, Maurice, thank you for the super chat. He asked about whether I believe buying stock in uh, grayscale is a good thing. And TJ and I have actually talked internally. If you guys want, TJ is the CEO here, okay? So we're, we're like a two-man team at this point. I mean, obviously, I'm his boss, and I tell him, you know, what, what has to happen at all times, okay? Uh, but uh, we make a lot of decisions together, and we've been talking a lot about whether we want to be investing into blockchain companies and whether we want to do some grayscale investments ourselves, even though there's really no upside to doing it other than just learning the process of buying them, being able to show you guys for our portfolio that's not something that we're really, you know, like stocks, meh, meh, I'm, stonks. Where's where's my boy RJ, my personal trainer? He was last night. He was hitting us with stonks, stonks, and I was like, God, you don't know how relevant that is to my life. Sans, Sans, uh, super chat. Thank you. Uh, I guess you are a super Saiyan. Okay, uh, you actually just asked on a super chat, whether I believe Litecoin is going to outperform Bitcoin on this bull run. This is what I'll say. I've got a huge video on Litecoin coming out probably this weekend or early next week. God, I, I think I've, I think I'm onto something here. I think I'm onto something really big with Litecoin. I told you guys for a long time, Litecoin is not a coin that I've been putting in my portfolio, but what have I told you? I've said Litecoin is the most consistent altcoin in history, even though for a long period of time, it seemed like there was nothing going on with Litecoin and there was no reason to really be focusing on it. I said, do not count it out because it's so consistent. It always finds a way somehow to be in the mix. And I do expect that again. So be watching for a, a big video on that. Tarek, Tarek, what's up, man? Hey, did we play baseball together when we were six I, or eight? Okay, I played baseball with Tarek, a guy named that when I was eight. I was a baller, okay? Tarek wants to know in a super chat what he wants to know about, or what I want to know about SNX, okay? I love it. Uh, it's it's my top DeFi pick. If you, if you look at my top DeFi picks for 2021, it's my number one. Uh, it is a, it, if you watch my portfolio video, you will see that VeChain and S, uh, SNX are both in that portfolio. Huge fans, uh, or I'm a huge fan of the, of that project, so. we uh, thanks, thanks, Joe. His name's Joe. Enzo, what's up, Enzo? Uh, yeah, we got a place to hang out in London. Uh, w look, when lockdown lifts, we globe trotting. So you all better get ready for that. Okay, back to it, guys. Let's move on. Let's start by looking at the prices of cryptocurrency today. Right now, Bitcoin coming in at $32,000. Let's refresh, make sure that is the freshest price. $32,126. Ethereum coming in at $1,052. Let's just do a quick look at the biggest gainers of the day. Stellar, that's what we're going to be talking about today. OMG Network, uh, Hedera Hashgraph, Reserve Rights. Guys, these numbers are looking so good. Theta on a bounce back from a dip after its huge run. Block Stack, a project that we love. Guys, it's feeling like mini altcoin season. 
It's feeling like many, this is not the behemoth altcoin season where coins in the top 1,000 pump. This is, we are starting to get the thing where it is not abnormal for projects to be pumping anywhere between 10 to 20% in a day, 30% uh, to becoming more common. And the difference now than, let's say, a few months ago was that we got a 30% pumper. Everybody would be talking about it like, oh my God, look, Stellar Pump, 30%. Nobody can believe it. But we can just go down this list and talk about a lot of these coins that have done that. I can talk, you know, Theta has pumped 60% this week. RSR, Reserve Rights, 100% this week. Uh, OMG, 43% this week. Guys, it is time. And, and, and it's so important you guys understand, over the summer, we were talking about moonshots, little bitty coins, because that's where the action was. Right now, we are on this top 100. There are other projects you guys know I love. Ferrum Network, got another video coming out about them. Uh, YF Die, you guys know we love that project. Smart Key is another one. Uh, you know, Zero Chain. These are some of the coins uh, that I love that are smaller caps, okay? These are longer-term plays over the next few months because when you really look what we want in this immediate short-term price action, I mean, my gosh, huh, I mean... OMG, like we're getting a lot every day and, and these top 100s are going to be more consistent to the downside. So they're going to have dips. A good strategy, we are entering the time when a good strategy is to look for the ones that are down and go scoop them up. Okay, Tron, eh, uh, I can't decide if I'm going to do a video on that soon or not. I, I would not be investing in Tron. And no FUD to that community. Uh, there's some things that I've seen, some rumors going around. Uh, that I may address in another video, I would not be putting money in Tron right now personally. And that is not a shot to them. I've worked with Tron before. I like the Tron people, um, but I would not be. Monero, that's another good one. XRP, still wondering if it's found its floor. Uh, but when you look at Kusama, uh, Uma, uh, I believe both of those kind of... No, Kusama is more of a smart contract platform, isn't it? U UMA is a is a uh, Oracle project, I believe. Uh, OKB, Hedge Trade. Hedge trade is one to keep your eye on for sure. Uh, CRO, that's one that had a dip. It's up 11%, down 1% now. Litecoin could be a great day to grab some Litecoin. Uh, TJ, can you move some money into Litecoin before the people on this uh, live stream like actually pump the coin up and we miss some gains? Uh, Litecoin, Nano had a huge pump. So guys, it's really just a good time uh, when you're looking for projects right now. Like it's fun. Look for, look. When there's blood on the street, buy. Okay, that's that's the famous phrase from, you know, uh, one of those uh, Baron von Rothschild, who, whoever, who knows who actually came up with that quote. Okay, but it's true. Now, we don't have a lot of blood in a bull market. Okay, in a bear market, that's got a totally different context. But in a bull market, when we're looking for the, these small price action moves on the downside, scoop, 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 scoop. I'm I'm actually adding a lot of stuff to my portfolio right now. We added some grid. Uh, or some graph, excuse me, uh, GRT to our portfolio yesterday is it was on a dip. So, um, you know, I, I think these are definitely some ones to be looked. We've been looking at Rin. That's one we added uh, uh, yesterday as well. So we're starting to expand what we're looking at because we're seeing the opportunity. So, uh, but let's get, let's get to Bitcoin, guys. Okay, Bitcoin right now, uh, we'll click the full featured chart here. Uh, and this is on uh, Bitstamp. I want, I want Bybit. I want Bybit. If you guys want to sign up for Bybit, obviously, uh, bybit.bitboy.live. A lot of you guys have been asking for that tutorial. We're going to do it this week. Probably this weekend it'll come out. Um, but you guys got to know, you need to understand what you're doing before you do it, number one. If you are brand new to crypto, it, you know, this is not... If you don't know how to use Coinbase, honestly, you should not be even looking at Bybit. But a lot of people who are beginners are asking about, oh, my country is restricted. She use a VPN. Uh, thanks, Digital Free For All, for that super chat. Uh, but, yeah, so that's something uh, I, I'm looking at. So the price of Bitcoin right now, uh, let's go ahead and turn on our market cipher. This is what we use to try to figure out, um, you know, what is going on with, uh, with the market. Uh, indicators and strategies. Market cipher A, B, S, R. I really need to get into the settings. I want to turn off the waves here because it's just it's hard it's harder to see the uh, harder to see the chart. So right now, guys, I'm still waiting on a green. I haven't seen a good green dot. Uh, that's the weekly chart. We obviously don't want to be looking at that. We want to be looking at something. I think on the hour chart there was one yesterday. Yeah, hour chart right there. Good time to jump in uh, right after that huge dip. But I'll tell you, I'll go ahead and be honest with you guys. Right now, I mean, kind of what I'm seeing from Market Cipher 
is we dipped a little bit into the uh, we dipped a little bit into the red on the money flow last night. Uh, you can see like this this line right here. Uh, Guys, we got to figure out TJ how to get uh, remind me to get OBS where we put a highlighter over the cursor. Uh, but the point is, is we dipped into the red on the money flow. Uh, if you look, the green, it, you only see green right here. This green, like, kind of wave right here, that's the that's positive money flow. You got to go all the way back to the end of January. Of course, that one day where we got stopped out uh, or liquidated to find red. But what happens? Whenever you're in a bull market and the money flow, which most of the money is coming in on either a positive side or a negative side, it's coming in on a negative side, then... Look what happens afterwards, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say, TJ, I think we should go ahead and put in a long on Bitcoin right now. Reason being because we got this green dot over here on the left when the price was right around uh, 31.27. We haven't really got the big movement up. So here in a second, we'll make a, a, a live trade on Bybit uh, and take advantage. Because when you see these green dots, if you go back and look at market cipher and the price of Bitcoin, okay? And you go back to the last time when we had this green dot here, okay? What did it do? Look, sideways pretty much. I mean, it had a little hump there, but sideways pretty much for, uh, what is this, the hour chart? Uh, for several hours, okay? When you look, especially at some of the longer time frames, you'll see some of the same things. But like, look right here. It didn't pop up here immediately, okay? Okay. It takes a little bit of time. And usually when you get one of these green dots at the bottom of Market Cipher, which I need to figure out, I'll ask CryptoBase exactly the what it's taking into consideration when it shows the green dots. You know, you're going to get big upward action. And we have not got that. Like, if you look here, going back to the middle of December, uh, you see you got this uh, green dot here. I mean, look how high it went. I mean, it went from... 22.8 all the way to 28 and then drop back down. So I think we are going to go ahead and take a flyer on a low leverage long here with Bitcoin um, here in just a second when we get over to Bybit. So let's move on over and uh, look at Ethereum real quick. Uh, yeah. Let, let's look at a little longer time frame, though, before we do that real quick. Right. Yeah, let me... Let me uh, just briefly touch on Ethereum. Yeah, isn't, I mean, the longer time frames aren't really showing anything that crazy right now. Let me just jump into Ethereum and show them what's going on with the Ethereum price. We always want to check the Ethereum price and the Bitcoin price every day right now. I mean, that's just kind of how we're at. Uh-oh. What is it? What are these dots? These... Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to do that once I, uh, when I make that Bitcoin trade here in a second. So, okay, guys, when we're looking here at the four-hour chart on Ethereum, I mean, you can see we've already had a good pop-off point. Uh, I saw something very interesting that will kind of factor into my uh, Ethereum prediction video tonight, which is that, you know, Tika Tawari, uh, a guy you guys love. I mean, a lot of our top videos are analyzing some of his picks. And this guy said some stuff. I, I like him. I, can we try to get him on the channel? I want to get, he may not like me because I've got good views off of analyzing his picks that people pay big money for, but I would like to try to get him on the channel because people like this guy. People say his, his Palm Beach Confidential is, is, you know, too expensive, but I'll tell you, all the research he does or his team does, it's really good research. And is it worth paying that much? If you have $500 in the bank, it's not worth paying $5,000 a year for. If you have $50,000 in the bank, $100,000, $200,000, you might want to consider it. But I'm going to continue to analyze some of the stuff he says. One of the things he said was, anytime you're getting Bitcoin under uh, $50,000, I think he said, or maybe it was under $40,000, uh, that's a good buy. But specifically what he said about Ethereum was interesting. He said, anything you get under all-time highs, anything under 448 is a good buy for Ethereum. Your last best chance to get in. I thought that was really interesting what he said. And I do tend to agree with him on that. I was just advising somebody to do that last night. I mean, somebody said to me, should I should I put all my money in Ethereum when it's $1,100? And I said, listen, it's hard for me because, and y'all know I keep it real. Like, it's hard for me to tell a person not to do that because that's what I've done. And that's what I believe can bring generationally you know, generation-changing wealth to people. 
uh, you know, in some cases, depending on how much you have or life changing or making your life more comfortable. So I think, you know, those are definitely some good things. Now, why do we think that the longs are good to take right now? Obviously, you know, if you watch our video, you know, trends are your friend. But the thing is, is right now there's something going on uh, with uh, with the world right now. Where is it? Here it is. Something going on with the world right now, and it, it, it takes place in my home state of Georgia. You guys can see I voted. If you want to ask who I voted for in our Senate runoff today, I'll tell you this. I voted for America, okay? Voted for America today. So, But here's the thing, guys. Bitcoin holds $31,000 ahead of the elections. What can we expect from here? Okay. There are only two well there's really three scenarios the the one scenario is kind of chaos kind of like what we have with the last with the presidential election okay the second is the democrats sweep the seats two to zero the most likely scenario i believe is a one-to-one -one split a one-to-one -one split or a two to zero republicans advantage they're the same thing either one and the republicans have the advantage in the senate okay you can really say that the entire power of the united states is up for grabs today with this one election, everybody knows it. I mean, that's why I've been bombarded with ads left and right. Which, by the way, I made two dad jokes to the uh, young ladies working in the polling precinct. And you can see what happened on TikTok with that. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, they didn't laugh and it pissed me off. Kids today. I don't even get a good dad joke. But somebody told me the best dad jokes are when they don't get it. Uh, so anyways, guys, let, let's look at those scenarios. What's going to happen to the price of Bitcoin? Okay, the Democrats win the Senate. They are in total control. Money printing bonanza is going to happen. Universal basic income is probably going to be the direction they're going to want to go. They're going to want to try to move toward, uh, you know, monthly payments to people, not, you know, whatever. And you know, the funny thing about this is they don't ask you whether you <laughs> need the money or not. Like they don't say, hey, how are you doing? Is your business doing okay during this? Like, do you need this money? No, you don't apply for it. They just give it. And so no person is going to take a check from the government and say, I'm not going to cash that. But, you know, what does that mean? That means that, like, they're going to be giving out way more money than needs to be given out. I mean, I know plenty of people that don't need these stimuluses, you know, these stimuli, if you will. So money printing bonanza is going to happen. If the Republicans win, guess what, guys? Just like with the presidential election, it's also great for Bitcoin. Why? Because Bitcoin, it likes... It likes two things. It likes total chaos or it likes status quo. Whatever, if, if there's kind of middle stuff going on, that's when you see, you know, uh, we can't really judge what's going to happen. Off the cycles, we can't. It likes the known, not the unknown. And he, there's, even with chaos, there's a bit of a known entity there, okay? So with the status quo, that if the Republicans win, that means there will be no major... You know, nothing major drastically will change for our country, you know, because the Senate won't approve it, you know. And we know executive orders are kind of weak and stuff like that. So we won't ha have to worry about, like, you know, judge stuffing or whatever they call that. We'll have to worry about any of those things the Republicans win, and things can just kind of stay where they are, and it's heading towards an economic collapse anyways. But I think Bitcoin would like that too. So really, Bitcoin itself is in a no-lose situation today. Now, if we look back at the Bitcoin chart, and we look at what happened with the presidential election. Well, what happened with the presidential election was exactly what I told you was going to happen a month in advance. I told you guys in a video on YouTube uh, that the, uh, let's see, let me put date, let me search date here. The, I told you guys that the most important date for, here it is, right here, Bitcoin news, this was two months ago, a month before the election, Bitcoin's most important date in 2020. What date was that? November 2nd, the day before the election. The best chance you could have had to get in Bitcoin and get it at a good price. The last chance. And what happened? What did I tell you guys was going to happen? I told you guys we were going to get massive green candles following that election. Well, here we are on the daily chart. Let's go back to what has happened since that date. Okay, look what was happening. Look what was happening before it. Okay, let's move this up a little bit. Oh, dang it, I hate when I do that. I do that every time, and I always do it while we're live, every time. Okay, let's zoom that out a little bit here. Go to November. Okay, look at what was happening before, okay, that date. A little bit of upward momentum towards the end, okay? Now look at what has happened since that date. Can't even circle it all. Look how big it is. That's what she said. I, I, I can't even circle it all. 
I have to, I have to draw a hump like a, like a freaking Campbell, okay? To show you guys what happened after. I told you guys this was coming. November 2nd was actually off of this date right here. So November 2nd, so let me see if I can get rid of that part right there where I erroneously circled something that did not need to be circled. You guys see what happened from the from the election. We th The thing is, we have precedent to believe that the price of Bitcoin during a presidential election is going to shoot up because all the marbles are in play. Well, we don't have the precedent of a vital runoff election following a presidential election. But I would make the argument that today, since all the marbles are up for grabs, that we could be looking at a situation where... Uh, we could be looking at a situation where we see massive green candles after this again. And I'm telling you guys, when 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 you see my Bitcoin prediction video on probably Thursday, it's nuts. It's insane. I found some secret things that connect this bull run to something that everybody's not really looking at. And when you guys see that, it is going to blow your mind. And, uh, you know... It, <laughs> It's scary to think about what the movement is going to be. So, okay, so there we go, guys. We talked about the election. Let's move on to the trades real quick, and then we'll get into the news of the day. Yeah, real quick with the trades. Well, we got to make a trade is the only thing. Uh, so, guys, this morning um, I got in on an Ethereum trade, okay? And that Ethereum trade did really well. I woke up, and the price was at 1030, and I said, you know what? It's at 1030, so it was probably about right here is this? What chart is this? 30-minute chart? Nope. It was probably about right here, somewhere in that range. And I said, what What do I want to do here? Okay? I said, ah, it feels like it could drop a little bit lower. So I saw the next couple minutes. It dropped down to 1018. At 1018, I jumped in, and I rode it up uh, to about 1035. If you guys want to see uh, that trade, because this, this is a totally transparent trading account, uh, we moved some Bitcoin over here to make some Bitcoin trades as well. Uh, you guys can see my closed PL profit and loss. Uh, the one 100x Bitcoin trade we made just for fun, we lost on. After that, we've nailed Bitcoin four times in a row for total profit of $2,100. But let's look at Ethereum that we've been trading since yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we traded, uh, we on that trade we did yesterday on the stream. We ended up making 0.36 ETH, so not that great. Uh, you know, a little bit of money. I mean, about, you know, 300, 400 bucks. Then I did hit another one, 1 1.5 ETH gain, and then the one this morning, 1.67. So I actually jumped in at 10.20 was my limit order. It flashed to 10.18, filled it, and then we got out at 10.40, and that was just 3X. That's just 3X leverage. That's not even that, you know, that crazy. We had, you know, pretty good protection with a stop loss down 5%. So let's go ahead uh, real quick and make this Bitcoin trade uh, live here on air. Okay, good. We got a little dip right here from Bitcoin. Looks like it's on a little bit of a downward action here. So let's go ahead and uh, trade our account here. Uh, why is it saying zero BTC right here? Why is it saying that? Market zero... Do I have something in order or something? Do not know why it is. Oh, because I'm on USDT. That's why I need to go to USD. Okay, there we go. BTC, USD. I was a little confused there. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and trade on that. Let's put like 90,000 contracts in. Let's go on a 5X. We're going to go ahead and do buy long uh, with a take profit. Take profit would be 33.55. That's pretty good. We'll take a 25% take profit. And of course, when we do these take profits, we may close the trade well ahead of that. It's just, you know, if it spikes up, we want to catch that and lock stuff in. Stop loss, uh, 31.5. I want to give myself a little more wiggle room than that. So let's put it at uh, 3,900. Nope, that's too much. Let's just, let's just leave it there. If we get stopped out at 31.5, then we're just going to get stopped out. It's going to be what it is. So we'll go ahead and hit that order. Okay, that is uh, going to get filled here. Now we're going to move on to the news. We got Bitcoin news, guys. Bitcoin billions. BTC billions. You guys know I am the Bobby Axelrod of crypto. Three arrows makes Bitcoin purchase worth over $1 billion. Yes. Yeah. Guys, if you guys appreciate this information and this analysis of Bitcoin and, and showing you guys the trades and the live streams, make sure you guys go ahead and smash the like button real quick. Yeah. 
5,400 watching live right now, and we only have 700 likes. So go ahead and smash that like button for us. I'll give you, I'll give you a second to do it. Hold, 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 hold on. We should be able to get to 1,000. I'm going to stare at you like this till we do. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Uh, so what is Three Arrows? Well, it is a Singaporean hedge fund, and they recently bought Bitcoin through the Grayscale Trust. Now, those Bitcoin are actually backed by physical Bitcoin. That's, the, that's why we like the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. You don't have the ownership or the custodianship of it, but it's a good way for newer investors uh, to get in. But guys, we're seeing more and more of these companies jumping in, spending billions of dollars in crypto. Uh, this makes it the second company after MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor's uh, uh, company, who we're going to try to get him on the show, uh, after MicroStrategy to eclipse the $1 billion mark in BTC holdings. The hedge fund company purchased 38888 uh, shares from Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust uh, at $34.10. So, so it's 1%. The price of, no, is that 0.1%? Uh, 30, uh, $34 is 0.1% of a Bitcoin. Yeah, or point. 0.01. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's it's one tenth of one percent is what the shares are. That's how they break them down. Why do they do that? Well, they do that because the the smaller they can break the shares down, the more accessible it is for people to buy, and that just helps the numbers go up and, and everything like that. That's why actually uh, the Ethereum Grayscale Trust actually did a, a split, a stock split a few weeks ago, and this actually. Uh, made it where it's more accessible. It, it did like a nine to one split. Funny story: the person I know who's who's really invested in the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, he came to me and he was like, "You didn't tell me there was a split." And I was like, "What do you mean?" It, was like, it happened a couple weeks ago. Well, they announced it and it took about two weeks for it to happen. And he was like, "I opened up my, you know, I opened up my account this morning. And it was like the the account the user stock trading it hadn't actually like correctly calculated his amount of shares. And he woke up and it was like." You know, he had basically lost like 85% of his portfolio, he thought. It was it was pretty pretty wild. So, hey, that's the stock system. You guys know it takes a while to update. Crypto, a little more cutting edge. You guys know how it is. Uh, but this is pretty big, guys. Um, let's see here. Let's move. Let's look at this tweet from uh, Frank uh, Shapiro. He said, Justin, three, ap uh, three arrows capital position in GBTC tops $1 billion. As per filing with the SEC, the firm's holdings represent... 36,969 Bitcoin. We continue to enjoy working with Grayscale and look forward to investing more in the crypto ecosystem. I bet you do. Frank Shapiro, Shapiro what, where are you guys at with this guy? You guys like this guy? He, uh, he kind of looks like one of your friends, TJ, a little bit. I like your friend. I don't know if I like Frank. I'm still, I'm still out on Frank. He was really hard on Tron when I was a little harder or a little more favorable for Tron. And so I was kind of holding that against him, but... Um, yeah, he seems like a nice enough guy. Hey, Frank. I just wanted to be frank with you. Okay, guys, if you didn't know, um, I'm actually uh, not one of the founding members of Naughty by Nature. But if you down with OCC, you know me. That, that's that terrible. God, can I redo that? Can I? Uh, I can't. We're live. You down with OCC? Yeah, you know me. That's how it goes. I messed up. Where's my Kool-Aid man? Go get my Kool-Aid man and, and, and we can bust him. Maybe he can like come in and say it. Or something like that. What are we talking about? And I, I like, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, guys. We're pushing towards 50K. Uh, it, all you got to do is just go to Twitter. There it is. We're at 46.7K right now. Um, but, uh, uh, you down with OCC? Yeah, you know me. There we go. That's a Kool-Aid, man. Don't want to drink too much of the Kool-Aid. I'm sure most of you guys don't know what OCC is. A lot of people didn't know what OPP is. It actually stands for other people... Never mind. I'm going to stop it there. <laughs> I'm going to stop it there for you youngins. Okay. Uh, but what does this mean? What is the OCC? The OCC is the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. It's the most regulatory dorkish name I've ever heard. But our boy, Brian Brooks, who used to be the, one of the lead attorneys at Coinbase, okay, is actually now in charge of the OCC. He was the deputy assistant, or he was a deputy, I think now he's the main sheriff in town. What does the OCC do? Well, it is the main bank regulatory body out there in the United States. They regulate banks, period, okay? And so what happened yesterday? Well, basically, Forbes had a uh, uh, an article on it, and Forbes actually hates 
ad blockers. So you guys keep that in mind with Forbes, okay? Um, let me refresh it here so you can actually see the article. OCC regulator... Oh God, I hate how they do that too. They put the ad at the top that won't go away. OCC regulator implements groundbreaking cryptocurrency guidance for banks and the future of payments. And this is by uh, Haley Lennon. I feel like I know... Where, where is she from? Haley, Haley worked at, oh, she worked with Brian Brooks. I think I met her before. I've seen her before, I think. Yeah, pretty sure we have. Yeah, Guys, can't wait for conference season. Conference season is going to be fun. Uh, there's Brian Brooks. Um, looks kind of like a combination of your dad and Bob Saget. So, um, and whoever, that's not TJ's dad. I mean, just anyone's dad. That looks like your dad and Bob Saget combined. Um, but he took the role of the acting comptroller of the currency, okay? And some of the Democrats, uh, what was her name? Uh, Rashida Tlaib, she came out against Brian Brooks, like, how can you be thinking about cryptocurrency at a time during a pandemic? Pandemic! How could you vote during a pandemic? How could you go on vacation? Pandemic! These people, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, glad I live in Georgia, that's what I'll say. But basically what they did, they made some really startling regulation kind of out of nowhere yesterday for cryptocurrency, and it's huge. A lot of you guys, you're newer, you may not even understand the full repercussions and reverberating effects of this, but it is really, really big. So the OCC has provided some interpretive letters and guidance, so if you want to look at those letters and guidance, uh, no, actually that's not what that is, that's them just internal linking. Uh, clarifying that banks can custody cryptocurrency and stable coins. This, this right here is big. If you go back and you look at my 2021 predictions, one was that a very specific stable coin is going to win the stable coin wars. USDC, where's Brian Brooks from? Coinbase, where's USDC from? Coinbase. I'm saying, don't say it's, you know, Making some moves on the inside tracks there to help his buddies, but I mean we all know Coinbase is the that's why he got the job there. They're the best regulated uh, and, and Circle also. So we're going to be talking about that in a video here probably pretty soon as well. Uh, Circle is kind of the uh, institutional crypto. What, how did you say it? It's owned by Goldman Sachs. It's, it's owned by Goldman Sachs. So Circle, another one um, that uses stable. They use stable coins. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. That's right. We had this conversation there. I couldn't remember it. So, Circle is also about USDC. They are kind of the institutional, um, you know, uh, method for a lot of you know crypto exchange for a lot of bigger institutional players owned by Goldman Sachs. Didn't Goldman Sachs come out negative about crypto one time? They all did. They all did. All of them did. So, anyways, guys. Cryptocurrency and stable coins, as well as engage in stable coin activity. The OCC also created a special purpose payments charter for fintech companies, which is like Dolphin Technology, I believe. Uh, in December, the chief economist of the OCC, Charles Calamaris, 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 that's what I'm going to call him, published a paper titled Chartering with Fintech Future, in which he set out benefits of the OCC providing bank charters. Now, today's uh, interpretive letter, which by today I actually mean yesterday, it's, it says that basically the actions that they made in enabling payment activities for banks means that a bank may issue stable coins, exchange stable coins for fiat currency, as well as validate, store, and record payment transactions by even serving as a node on a blockchain. I mean, guys, this is groundbreaking stuff. Uh, it says over time, part of the letter said over time, <sighs> over time, gosh, that took me back to the Super Bowl for a second. Um, somebody, some some Patriots fan on uh, that video where I talked about the Super Bowl, he's uh, in the Falcons the other day driving around, talking about how it's kind of like, you know, Bitcoin. Uh, everything had to go right for the Patriots to win the Super Bowl and the Bitcoin, everything's going right for it to get to $500,000. He said it was his favorite video because he's a Patriots fan. It really made me sad. Not. God, y'all are the worst. Hey, hey, y'all still got more wins than us this year. <laughs> okay. So basically in the uh, interpretive letter, it says, over time, banks' financial intermediation activities have involved, have evolved and adapted in response to changing economic conditions, pandemic, and customer needs. DeFi, all of that right there. Banks have adopted new technologies to carry out bank permissible activities, including payment activities. The changing financial needs of the economy, print money, brrr, are well illustrated by the uh, increasing demand in the market for faster and more efficient payments, 
stimulus money through the use of decentralized technologies such as INVNs, which validate and record financial transactions, including stablecoin transactions. Now, what, what does INVN stand for? Internal, I don't know. I, can you look that up, TJC, exactly? Oh, oh here it is. Here it is. It says uh, independent node verification networks, a.k.a. a node on a decentralized network. But one thing that really is huge about this that it doesn't like necessarily like spill out and just say, uh, let's, let's see if it actually says it in here. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So Nick Carter, um, who is, is he not a Backstreet Boy, Nick Carter? That's not the same Nick. It's not the same Nick Carter. How old is this guy? Is he, is he younger than the Backstreet Boy? Like, like. I mean, surely he's old enough to where his parents named him that and didn't know Nick Carter was, you know, basically going to be the, the creme de la creme of, you know, boy band lead singers. Okay. Royalty. He actually just got second or uh, second or third on uh, The Masked Singer. So, uh, really, I did not think it was him. I thought it was Adam Lambert. I watch it with my kids. You know, it's pretty fun. But anyways, Nick Carter, who's actually a crypto guy, and I did know that because he spells it with it, just to see, partner of Castle Island Ventures, added this will allow banks to take advantage of the always-on features of public blockchain. So, guys, 24-7 market, don't have to have people working overnight, blockchain kind of runs itself. We all know we're going to 24-7 borderless economies, okay? And this is going to help banks better compete. And I told you guys this for a long time. Banks are not going away. They're going to adopt cryptocurrency. That's what's coming. And these CBDCs, these are internal private blockchains, right? So these are public blockchains that we're looking at. Kind of when the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, said, hey, we might use private sector to help build the digital dollar. All this is working together, okay? Now, speaking of countries... Um, that are using cryptocurrency, private blockchains, okay? XLM, actually. Big news yesterday. Now, the price gained 30% in a day as positive sentiment shifts from XRP to Stellar. Told you guys this was coming. The number one project to benefit from XRP getting kind of thrown on the trash heap for now. I think they will resurrect at some point. Um it, we need to see TJ if they've made it, if anybody's made recent comments on that from the SEC or uh, Ripple themselves. But if they're able to resurrect, I think they'll be able to move back up. But in that meantime, okay, it's kind of like you guys love football references. I know you guys love them because my life is crypto and football. That's pretty much it. Taking my kids to the Tennessee Titans game uh, this weekend. My kid loves Derrick Henry, so we're gonna have a playoff game this week. I'm gonna wear my Falcons jersey. But here's the thing: imagine if your favorite team is trying to, you know, is, let's say, first in your division, okay? Let's say you're six and two and you're in first place. The Another team is tied for you, tied with you, six to two. Uh, that's their record. And what happens? Their quarterback breaks his leg. He's a great quarterback. Now, let's not say he breaks his leg. Let's say he pulls his groin really bad, like not several times, just one big pull. And he pulls his groin and he's out for four weeks, Okay. You know during that four weeks, if your team, especially if they're kind of the underdog in the division race, they got to do as much as they can do to get to gain as much momentum and get as far ahead of that other team as possible because when that quarterback comes back, he's going to be ready. And he's going to be coming out firing, ready to, ready to go, ready to push his team towards the playoffs and to try to catch you. If you go one and three during those four games – and he comes back, you in trouble. You go two and two, you probably in trouble. You got to take advantage of that. You got to go three and one or, or four and zero. Oh. And that's what's happening between XRP and Stellar. Okay, is that Stellar has uh, XRP broke its leg? It's out right now. Stellar, it's game time. Not only is Stellar technically performing well, but fundamentally there are some things going on with it that can push it further. XLM pumps to seventeen cents as Ukraine officially has tapped the Stellar blockchain. For its central bank digital currency. Now it's over 28 cents. Uh, wow. I mean, it's got to be because people saw people saw on this video uh, that it says XLM Moon, and they went all in and started buying it. That's why I'm glad we bought up all that Litecoin. Um, so anyways, guys, if, if we go and we look at this price pump here, Stellar up 31% last 24 hours. On, on CoinMarketCap, it's showing 18.5 cents. 
uh, really doing well, performing well. Ukraine now going to be using this for their blockchain. We, we've seen countries say they, they will use public blockchains that are, you know, public sector or private sector. Pop, excuse me, let me sip some water here. Public blockchains that are ran by the private sector. That's what I meant to say. So I think I think right now for Stellar, it's it's moon time. I think we're gonna be really seeing this project continue to pump. And anything that the team or the holders or the community can kind of do internally to to move the price right now. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying anything manipulative or fraudulent. I'm just saying like right now is the time when we might see some things lining up, whether they got news they want to release. They're going to release it during this time, I think, just like this, and try to get that price to run as far as they can get it to run while XRP is on the sidelines. Uh, so, guys, uh, where are we at here? Um, are we are we through all of our stories today? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to get there. We're going to at the end of this video. I'm going to tell you guys exactly why this is big for other blockchains, uh, like Algorand, Ethereum, obviously. Uh, Solana, and what was the other one? XLM? Yeah, and XLM. Those are the main ones. So we're going to do a conclusion. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, but guys, I wanted to show you this because this is really big, I think. Deep analysis, Bitcoin going to 384K and why it may happen in the next 6 to 12 months. And that's good because the price uh, has, has, uh, has popped here and we never got that order filled. We never got that order filled, unfortunately. That really sucks because that would be a huge trade we would have made. It never filled. It didn't get to our fill spot. But if the price goes 384, we would have made a lot of money. Okay, now why? Why is this deep analysis here present? Well, it's pretty obvious when you think about it, guys. This guy said, deep analysis, Bitcoin going to 384K, and it may happen within 6, 12 months. And when I saw this, I said, what kind of deep analysis is this guy doing? I mean, who is this guy? Who is uh, Telebob Bob? Okay, who, who is Telebob Bob, not the IRS with a bunch of, uh, you know, weird emojis? It says, he spent the holiday analyzing Bitcoin. Obviously, he's a British because he said holiday, I think, uh, right? And, and spelled analyzing with an S instead of a Z. He's come to the conclusion that Bitcoin will likely go to 384K. The reasoning, and this is very sound logic. The distance to the moon from Earth is about 384K. So for Bitcoin to go to the moon, it will likely have to reach 384K. That's that's obvious. Now, once again, we know this guy's British because he says, for the, I mean, pretty much Americans and British are only two people out there, right? He said, for those of you who use miles, me, I use miles, we've got a lower target. Instead of kilometers, Bitcoin will only have to reach about 238K. Above, slightly above my my uh, previous Bitcoin prediction of 225k, and I agree with him. Still great gains. Uh, anyways, the conclusion is load up and hodl, and I agree with him on all of these points. People call me a moon boy. They think it's because I think Bitcoin's going to go so high. Is because I understand the sound logic behind relating the price of Bitcoin to the physical moon, and it's you know the perspective distance between it and Earth. Now, you know. When are we gonna start looking at the sun? When are the sun gains coming? I'm just telling you. Uh, I wonder what's. I wonder what is higher, the percentage gains from the initial, uh, uh, you know, release of Bitcoin to now, or the number of miles to the sun. Uh, is the miles to the sun? Mars would be interesting to look at, though. Uh, so, anyways, guys, that that is uh, th that's all we got for today. I am just sick right now looking at this, TJ. Uh, this is not a position. This is an active trade. It did not fill. Man, we we must have hit that thing just right before it spiked. We were dead on with that trade. We TJ, we would be up $1,000 in Bitcoin value right now. So we nailed the timing of the trade, but unfortunately, we did not get the trade because it did not get filled because I like to do limit instead of market because you save a little bit of money. You guys are interested in signing up for Bybit. You guys can do that at bybit.bitboylive. Uh, TJ, do we have anything else, or are we going to wrap it up here? The yeah, the conclusion that I told you guys that we were going to come to, obviously, that I just said I was going to do, and then I forgot. So what can you guys do with this information? 
what this means for what this OCC news about declaring stable coins basically usable and tradable for payment activities from banks is that projects who have stable coins built on them are going to be able to freely continue in that way. If you take the number of altcoin or the number of stable coins that are on Ethereum, it's vastly larger than the rest. So that means Ethereum once again is going to have a big advantage. USDC built on Ethereum. Uh, Tether, that technically it was built on Omni, but there is a TRX and Ethereum version of that. Okay, uh, when you look at you know Solana has some stable coins built on it. USDC is Moon to Solana. Solana is a very interesting one. We might be talking a lot more about on this channel soon. That's a hint for you guys. I don't. It's a hint. I don't know. It's a hint too. I haven't written the video yet. Uh, but Solana will be making an appearance on the channel uh, in a non-sponsored way uh, here in the next few weeks for sure. Definitely want to keep your eye out on. But what does this mean? It, I think we can even go outside of crypto and and say, what does this mean in the larger macro context of economics? Think, yeah, banks are embracing crypto, guys. And the governments are giving them the room to be able to do that because here's an interesting concept we I don't think we've really thought about before. I haven't seen anyone else talk about it, and I'll be honest with you, this thought literally came to my brain right now at this moment, is that banks and governments are seeing the future. And if crypto is able to totally take over in the next few years, in the next 10 years, 20 years even, that could render banks obsolete if they don't adopt crypto technology. Now, that's that's not something that, you know, we've talked about that before, but here's the interesting thing. Could it be that governments and banks are so hand-in-hand, -hand, working together, patting each other's bottoms in a very awkward way continuously, that the governments are going to clear the way for the banks to be able to be big movers in crypto. And that's something interesting to think about. Kind of clearing the way while we're still at, I think, pretty small price points, that some of these banks by the next bull run, I, I could say that the 2024 20, bull run could be the bank run. It could be the bull bank run. It could be where these institutional investor, in, you know, institutions are creating their own coins. It could be where Google and Amazon finally create their own coin. Because I'll tell you this, if Google and Amazon and Facebook and Twitter do not create, and Netflix probably too, if they do not create their own cryptocurrencies, when crypto's done with what it's about to do in the next few years, those are going to be increasingly irrelevant companies and the crypto companies, Cardano, Ethereum, Polkadot, all of these companies, of course, Bitcoin, uh, not a company, uh, all those others are coins, you guys know what I'm saying, they're going to be increasingly relevant. So I think that's definitely something to keep your eye on, and I think that th this is a big day for cryptocurrency. I know these aren't the sexy stories, like Bitcoin you know, pops 20%. These aren't the sexy stories, but these are the stories that lay the groundwork. This is when you take your wife out for a date, because you know later on you're going to be bored with what she's telling you, but later on you might reap some sloppy benefits, if you know what I mean. You guys make sure to stay tuned for tonight's Ethereum break.